Hi there, I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. Welcome to our Friday live question and answer class where you can ask your questions regarding American English pronunciation, intonation, American accent, anything that you need to help you improve your overall communication in American English. We've been talking lately a lot about uh, vowel sounds and spelling and also just looking at a lot of individual words. So feel free to ask your questions at any time. If you're new to class, welcome. And welcome back to the many of you who I've been seeing now every Friday for quite some time. It's great to hear your questions because they help not only you but other viewers as well. You may also have been watching our word of the day classes. I've been taking your requests and um, have no fear if you made a request and you're waiting for your word, I am working my way through the list. So we've had many wonderful suggestions for words to cover and um, there's many, many, many challenging words in English as well as some words that might not seem challenging on the surface, but they are actually challenging. Um, nice to see you today, welcome. Let's um, take a few uh, of the uh, recent requests from Word of the Day, I'll start with a couple of those, but if you have a question, go ahead and ask me at any time and then I'll switch to taking your questions. So we did have a request recently for, um, let's see what word I was looking for, um, for the word scholarship. Um, it wasn't that recently, this was requested in December, so you can see where I am in the list. Um, so for the word scholarship, we have the word, starts with the word scholar, and then we have ship, and it has first syllable stress. So my skull syllable is stressed, and my lership syllables are shorter and unstressed. The, this um, is, looks similar to school, um, which has the SK, the SK, and the U vowel, and in scholarship, the O actually says an ah vowel, so ska, um, we think of that as A or A-H, ska. And then letters A-R in scholarship say the E-R sound. So often we have um, R's together with vowels in the middle of words, um, which sound like E-R. So that can be spelled with O-R, U-R, A-R, I-R, lots of different spellings it's still the same vowel sound, the er sound. And it's short and unstressed, but I do make that tense sound. And then ship is just like the word ship that has the i vowel. So scholarship, um, that will, that's um, how we say that. And when I can say scholarship by itself, of course, I wanna practice saying it in some short phrases. For example, um, I'm applying for a scholarship for college. Okay, uh, we have a question for how to pronounce asked and words that end in STS, such as tests, ghosts, etc. Sure, I'd be happy to talk about that. So the word asked follows the rule for past tense where when we add ED, it can say three different things. Most of the time, ED is gonna just say the D sound. So for example, in moved, lived, showed, anytime the the verb ends with a vowel or another voiced consonant sound. We just add the D for ED. Asked ends in a voiceless sound. The K, um, the K sound is voiceless. And so in that case, ED says the T sound, T. And so I just basically have a blend of S, K, and T, and then my first vowel in asked is the black cat vowel. So I asked the cat. Now it's not super simple to do the sk-t all together, so you might wanna try going slowly, um, starting on your S, sk-t, and then sk-t. Try, try sequencing those sounds. Um, when I can say that, then add your vowel, sk-t, asked. <laughs> um, not super easy, and similarly, um, your STS words like tests, ghosts. Um, I just would, again, suggest building the sequence where we have the s and s all together one step at a time. So for example, for something like that, the easiest way would be to say just tests, 
with just the S and then test. So I go from, move from my S to stop the air quickly with my T, test. And then finally, tests. <laughs> you can try doing just STS. Um, that kind of, it's challenging. So it might be easier to build it, tests. Um, I didn't write it the first one. So saying tests, test, tests. Um, yeah, not easy. Um, but it's kind of important because if any of those sounds drop out, it'll sound like just the singular test or it'll sound like tests if my uh, T sound drops out. Um, yeah, um, great question. Thank you for bringing that up. I hope those techniques help you and just be patient as you're trying to sequence all those sounds at the ends of the words. Um, okay, we have a question, a request for the word hippopotamus. Um, so hippopotamus has stress on the pot syllable, hippopotamus, um, pa, hippo, pa, I didn't spell it right, that's my problem. <laughs> I left out a P, I'm looking, looking at it saying, I don't, we don't stress the po, hippo, not another P, potamus. Um, so, um, we do stress the pot, but we have an, another O before it. So hippopotamus, because the hippa is unstressed, we have an I vowel and a schwa. Sounds like just the word hip, like we were talking about with ship. And then that first O says a uh, schwa, hippa. Then in the stress syllable, very often in English, when you have letter O in a stress syllable, it's gonna say that ah uh, sound, just like we were looking at um, in the previous word. Um, so hippa, pa, then this T becomes a flat, sounds like a light D sound. And then this A is another schwa, hippopotamus, and another schwa. So if I see it in the IPA, in the dictionary, I'm gonna see lots of schwas, hippa, pa, there's my stress mark, the schwa, mus. This last mus, I almost have no vowel. I almost try to go right from the M to the S, mus, hip, hippopotamus. Um, yeah, okay, not easy, <laughs> long word. And, and uh, of course, if you, you spell it correctly or incorrectly, like I did initially, you're gonna miss some syllables. Anything like hippopotamus where there's multiple syllables, breaking it down, hippopotamus speeding back up and stressing the correct syllables, you'll get it eventually with, with some practice. Uh, nice to see so many of you here today. We have a question about um, the words unduly and duty. And uh, in online dictionaries, this viewer saw them written as duty or duty. Um, so Americans will use both, but more typically Americans will use um, duty um, with just the ooh, so like you like you wrote it, duty instead of duty. You will hear both. This is more typical though of British. So we say words like new. We just say them as new rather than new. I do have um, a video, several videos where I talk about this. The one I'll suggest uh, is my video where I'm talking about during and other um, um, words like during, I remember that's in the title. So after class, um, as I've been doing lately, I will go through and put timestamps. I'll write a comment that has all the words we covered today as well as when they happened. And there I'll put extra links for um, other suggested videos to help you. So you can take the information from class and you can take it a little bit further to get more help with your particular question. Um, hi, Halim, nice to see you. Um, so Halim's asking about a few words. Let's cover your first word first, Halim, and then we'll come back to the others if there's time. So he's asking about rhythm. This is one that's hard to spell. It's, it's not as hard to say, although the voice TH makes it hard. So this TH sound is a th like in there and them. So tongue between teeth and voice on. 
Then them, them, we go right into the M sound. So we pull the tongue back and close for the M. And the R part is American I, uh, American R and lax I sound. So I would rewrite it kind of like this, rhythm, maybe with a little schwa in there, um, or just thinking about, again, in that unstressed syllable, not a lot of uh, vowel sound, rhythm, rhythm. He's also asking about scheme and hemorrhage. So you can hear me say them once. I will come back to those um, after I've answered a few other people's questions as well, Halim. Um, uh, request from Samantha, I hope I'm saying your name right, for the word shoot. It's the same as this word shoot. So even though we spell, typically spell the SH sound with the letters SH rather than CH, the SH sound, in the word shoot, it's spelled with a CH, which makes it confusing. And then often in American English, we don't say shoot with an aspirated T. We'll just say, say shoot and we'll stop that T and not release the air. So thinking about it like the word shoe or this shoot and then stopping my T should help you. Um, good question. And hi, Dana. Nice to see you. Um, she wants to know about um, how Americans would pronounce Tutankhamun, um, the ancient Egyptian pharaoh. I happen to be very interested in King Tut as we, <laughs> so that's what, one thing we'll say is we won't say Tutankhamun, we'll say King Tut. Um, that has the uh um, schwa vowel. If we do say Tutankhamun, we say it like this, uh, toot with a stop T, so oo vowel, toot n, syllabic N, so toot n, um, where we kind of leave out that, there's a little tiny schwa there, but just like we say cotton, mountain, or button, we would do the stop T and N, toot n, common. Um, we have the a uh, vowel, and then basically like another um, toot n, common, another um, syllabic N. So toot n, it's like the word common, toot n, common stress on the calm. Um, or a lot of us will opt for King Tut uh, as a short, as an abbreviation, which I'm sure you're aware of as well. Thanks. That's a um, fun one to talk about. Um, and the next question, carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores. So um, all have the same vores ending. For carnivores, we have first syllable stress. Um, this dip is the diphthong R, like in the word R or car, carna. Um, so thinking about it, you could write car. And this I is going to say an I or a schwa. I will, I'm going to write it as a schwa, carna, carna. And then vor, this OR. Um, is the or diphthong, just like or or for. Um, and then it ends with the Z sound. So first syllable stress, carnivores. If I change to herbivores, it sounds like um, an er vowel and then a B instead of an N, herbivores. And lastly, omnivores sounds like this letter O being stressed. Again, herbivores all have first syllable stress. Omnivores, that letter O, like we've seen in a couple of words so far in class, letter O is often ah when it's in the stress syllable. So um, na, and then our vores again. Carnivores, herbivores, omnivores. Um, great, great request, thank you for that. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, let's see, a request for the word um, technique. So um, red tent vowel, technique. Um, <laughs> so rewriting it just like the word tech, um, thinking about that as being a K sound, that CH. Um, and then the neek, just a clear eval technique and has second syllable stress. So 
you'll see um, that the tech is short, but it does still have the clear vowel. And then the neek is held longer because it's stressed. Um, and then if I made it plural techniques, uh, the, it would just be the KS blend at the end. Um, great, thank you. Next request, question um, about can and can't. Um, so after class, I'm gonna put a link in the comments for a video I have that goes into a lot of detail about can and can't. It's a very um, uh, uh, common question because um, when I just say the word can by itself, I use the black cat vowel and same for the word can't. And I could put a T on, but what we really do in connected speech is when I'm saying can, I pretty much reduce that to just no vowel or the red tent vowel. So if I say, I can go, I can, I can go. You can hear how I'm not saying I can go. I'm saying I can, I can go, it gets reduced. If I'm just saying I can, then I can pronounce it with my A vowel. Most of the time though, I'm saying I can go, I can talk to you, I can do it. I'm reducing down to this can um, with little vowel or the red tent vowel versus can't with a T. Um, the main difference isn't T or lack of T because when I'm saying I can't, can't, you notice I don't really aspirate that T. I just say I can't, I can't go. Um, so we use a stop T there, so it's hard to hear that. I do mark it because my make my N very short on can't. I can't talk about it. I can't go. Um, the main difference you'll hear is that the can't does not reduce the vowel. So I do have that black cat vowel in can't, however I'm, however I'm using it. Um, so that's a lot of information about two little words, and it, neither of them really follows um, the rules based on how they should for spelling or they're different, pronounced differently in different contexts. So again, more detail about that to follow. Um, after class, look at the comments and you can go to the link for my can and can't video. It gives you more examples and help. Um, great. Um, so uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back um, to Halim had a couple words and then I'll come back for those of you who are coming to your second and third request. Um, so Halim wanted to know about scheme um, that just has um, the, again, and here's another CH that says K. So it's just like the word ski. I'm gonna go skiing and then add an M. I'll rewrite it with E-E-M because often we spell that tense E vowel with an E-E -E or an E-A, so scheme. Um, and then your other one, Halim, was hemorrhage. So hemorrhage um, has first syllable stress, red tent vowel, hem, just like the hem of a dress, hemorrhage. We can say hemorrhage with the OR saying er, and then um, idge has the i and the j sounds. Um, often we reduce that er in the middle and it sounds more like, um, excuse me, sounds more like hem ridge, hem, hem ridge. Um, that, so that's a good way to remember it. Um, that H is silent and um, we just have a pretty quick middle syllable there for hemorrhage. Um, okay, good. Thank you for those requests. I'm glad I was able to have time to come back to them. Um, we had a second request um, from cute Raffaella for toe and toe. These are the same. They both just have the O diphthong. So towing a boat with my toe. Um, other words with OW might have a different vowel pronunciation, but these two have the same. Uh, you just wanna watch out that you're holding your O long and that you're doing two vowels O where you're starting with a tense uh, rounded O, and then you're relaxing a little bit and closing the jaw. Um, great question. Um, we have another question. Um, sometimes pronunci pronunciation changes even though the two words resemble each other, like the words premonition and premunition. Um, same, they're different. Same goes for diminutive and uh, 
dimin, diminution, diminution. Um, where did the you go is the question. Uh, so diminutive, um, it's often has to do with where the stress lies. So for example, I, I don't know the word diminution, um, but following the rules of English, <laughs> it has second to last syllable stress, diminution. And so then I have the clear vowel, ooh, for my letter U, for, whereas in diminutive, um, in diminutive, my stress is on the min syllable. And so then my U can get reduced to a yeah, diminutive. Um, so similarly, communicate, I'm gonna have a clear U, communi communication, no, that one doesn't follow the rule. <laughs> um, so typically the stressed syllable has a clear vowel. The unstressed syllables can either have a clear vowel or reduced vowel. So in your particular examples, because this, the change comes because there's a different syllable that's stressed. When you look up a word in the dictionary, if I look up diminutive, I'm gonna see in the IPA, D or D, I'll see a little line before that stressed syllable, diminutive. And if I look at bin, dim, diminution, I'll see a little line before the new syllable. So that's um, another hint for you about um, the vowel sounds. It's really helpful to learn about syllable stress because it does change the pronunciation, particularly of vowels. And oftentimes you might be pronouncing all of the sounds in a word correctly, but having the incorrect syllable stress means it sounds like a very different word and people might not understand um, the way you use that word. It also helps answer questions like yours. Um, so learning about that can be useful. I do have several videos about syllable stress on my intonation playlist, some short ones and some longer ones and some lessons for that on speechmodification.com. So I would check those out. Um, great, so many good questions today. Um, we have a question about immigrant, immigrant has first syllable stress. So it sounds like the word in, but with an M, Im. Um, and then, so you can either do immigrant with an I sound or immigrant with a schwa sound. I think I use more of a schwa sound, immigrant. Um, and then again, uh, I think I use a little bit of, you can use either an I or a schwa. We don't do immigrant. We don't you do the A vowel, unstressed syllable, reduced vowel. So I almost do no vowel there in that last syllable. So long, short, short, immigrant, grunt. Um, I probably do a little bit of an I vowel there. The most important thing is that um, I'm trying to really stay very relaxed and reduced on those unstressed vowels. Um, and just back to our last topic, if I look at then immigration, my A in immigration, immigration, the gray syllable is stressed. And then I have the clear vowel A versus in this word immigrant, that A gets reduced down to the I or the schwa. Um, so syllable stress, vowels really go hand in hand in terms of pronunciation. Um, Great. Um, oh, dim, diminution as as into diminish in size. Yes, based on um, the um, the structure of the word, I uh, could figure out that that was the meaning, even though it's not a word that I typically use. Um, if I had no <laughs> um, familiarity with the word, I would look it up and show you that in the dictionary too. Uh, sometimes, many times people ask me about words that I don't know and I have to look them up. The, the most important thing to learn, I think, for pronunciation, um, of course, words that you use frequently, you wanna le learn, know, be able to do, have a good command of, but knowing what you don't know, knowing how to look something up, um, where to get good information and how to make use of that inf information from the dictionary is way more valuable um, because it applies for everyone and for all skills. And so I often try to model that as well, that I'm always looking up words, verifying, checking my pronunciation from what I think I know, what I use for, and what else can be out there. Um, so yes, lifelong learning when it comes to words. Um, we have a request for the word 
crab. We just have the K sound. And this has the black cat vowel, crab. Um, the B, pretty much unreleased. I'm not necessarily gonna do crab with a strong B, crab, crab. I'm just gonna um, stop and maybe not let that air out after that B. Um, and then a uh, question about wonder and wander. If they're the same, uh, no, they're not the same. Wonder has the schwa, sounds like uh, and wa, wander has the ah, uh, sounds like ah, uh, wander. Um, so wonder, um, you might wanna pair with something like some, because that also has the schwa, some wonder, and maybe um, ah, uh, let's see, dog wanders, wa, wa. so that has the ah uh, vowel. Um, I always like that with words that are similar to each other, that it's hard for you to hear the difference. Take some words that aren't similar. So some and dog, especially if I rewrite some this way and dog this way, I'm not gonna confuse those two. Some, dog, I can clearly hear the vowel difference. So then when I make that pairing, wonder, some, wonder, and dog, wander, it's easier for me to hear the difference between wonder and wander because I have another anchor point for the vowel to make the comparison. Um, I, I find that to be very useful, um, especially if, generally for vowels to get some vowel anchors to have a word that you know, that you know what the vowel is, you know what the sound is, and you can use compare it to other words to help you with those more challenging ones. Um, okay. Um, um, so we have a comment that, um, um, well, just about syllable stress. Um, um, yeah, good. That, I'm glad you have a technique for that. Um, Dana would like to know about Emirates, how it's commonly pronounced as, for example, as in United Arab Emirates. Um, so this is another one with an er syllable that gets a little bit reduced. I would say I do say emirates. I do say three syllables. I don't go all the way to emirates, emirates. Um, but this is quite reduced, so it's close. It gets, almost gets down to two syllables. Red tent for the first vowel, m, and then small, very short schwa, emirates, and then um, uh, uh, the lax if vowel for the last one, Emirates, Emirates. So either Emirates. I'd say when I say United Arab Emirates, I'm doing more um, length on that uh syllable. If I'm just saying Emirates, <laughs> um, I might be faster on that. I'm not sure why that is. I think probably because in if I'm saying United Arab Emirates, this is stressed for the phrase. And so I I'm just have a little more time on the word emirates. Um, so a little more time for that middle syllable. And whereas when I'm just saying emirates, um, it's not it's not as long. Um, that's my guess. I don't know if you wanna know that level of detail. <laughs> my brain is always trying to take what I do naturally as a native speaker and figure out why I do that. Um, native speakers don't know why they pronounce things the way they do. They're just following the rules, the code, the phonology of English together with the intonation rules. And it causes variability. A word is, is different in the context. Sounds are different in the context than, than just by themselves. And so um, there's a lot of different layers that can change things. This is something that's highly interesting to me. I know sometimes <laughs> I might be giving you more details than you want. Um, and I also try to give you a simple, straightforward answer. So uh, thanks for bearing with me while I talk about my process and what I'm thinking as I, as I explain. Okay. Um, we have um, uh, another list of words. Um, um, okay. So we have a question about um, the word affidavit. Why don't I read you your words um, and we'll cover some of them and I'll, I can also keep track of 
them um, and cover them in future classes as well, since we're getting a little short on time. Um, so I'll say them now once so you can hear them. Um, your words are affidavit, bludgeon, tenure. Um, and then you have a question about difference uh, in spelling between horse and horse sound as in rough sound. I'm not really sure I understand your question. So you're asking horse and horse. Um, those have the same pronunciation. Those are both or, they have the or diphthong and the S. Um, but I don't know what you mean exactly about as in rough sound. Um, yeah, so those, those two are the same. Um, and then um, we had a question about rule and ruler. Um, so for rule, because it's one syllable, I have the oo sound, ru, ru, and then I have a dark L, so there's a little bit of a schwa sound before my L, ru, and when I glide from a rounded oo to the unrounded schwa, uh, I end up with a little bit of a W sound in there, ru, so it might help you to kind of think about that as like the word wool and the word ru or ru, whereas ruler because there's a vowel in the middle be um, or because there's two syllables and not one then I end up with ruler and I don't have any um, glide because um, the L goes on this on this um, er syllable ruler ruler uh, I do think I have a video about ruler um, but that would be a good one to make if I don't especially because rule and ruler um, do something slightly different because of, again, um, having more time with syllables or lack of syllables. Um, okay. Um, um, you're, you're welcome. Um, one more request. Um, you say you have an issue with the words that contain um, by an unimportant 360 feet or into an unsustainable climb, referring to the combination of an, un, and some word. Um, okay, so if you have to say the word an and then something with an un after, you have trouble with that. Um, so like um, an unimportant, let's use an, un, an, an unimportant. Um, you hear me stumbling with that too. It's a little challenging because I have to do um, by and unimportant. If I just start with, if I was saying like, that's, um, if I was saying an unimportant question and unim I would probably make a little break there. Um, if I'm using it in connected speech, by and unimportant, by and, then my an is gonna get reduced. My vowel is gonna drop off a little bit and it'll sound more like by and unimportant. So I'll link by and, and, and unimportant uh, these get a little linked. I oh, exaggerated a little much there. You don't want a none important, not too much N there, but by an, by an uninteresting, by an unimportant, by an. Definitely, I don't do my a vowel if my an follows um, and can be connected. If I'm saying um, an unimportant um, event and an and, un, and unimportant, I, I might make a little break there because I have to keep my vowel for an. I can't just do an unimportant. I can't start on that reduced n. So if it's in the middle or at the end, and I have a word before an, then I'm just going to use more of an n. If I have to do an unimportant something, I'm going to be a little clearer with my an vowel, and I might have to break a little between those two words. Uh, that's my um, off the top of my head response. I can think a little bit more about your questions. Um, and if I have some different advice for you, I can leave it in a comment later on after class. Um, uh, another request for pronouncing rule of thumb, rule of thumb. So rule of, I'm gonna link, that's gonna be a little bit more like when I'm doing ruler and I have that L. If I have rule, rule of, rule of thumb, think about that as being more like rule of, rule of. Um, I link these two 
and then it um, makes that L function more like it's at the start of the word rather than the end of the word. Rule of thumb. Um, okay. Uh, the word cash is just like the word cash. So K sound, black cat vowel, SH sound, cash. Um, and then sadist, even though it looks like the word sad, it has the A vowel, so it's more like say, sadist. This if vowel is pretty short and reduced, so long on my say and short on my dist, sadist, sadist. Um, um, uh, you're welcome. I'm glad that that helped you with the, I'm thinking you're talking about the an and on. It, it is hard. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with you. It's, it's just a challenging combination of sounds. Um, thank you. You guys have had great questions and you've been patient with me as well as um, I haven't had to be patient with you at all. Um, uh, let me just see if there's anything else I missed. Um, I don't think so. I think that was the questions for today. Um, I will be back with another live question and answer class next Friday at the same time. And as well, uh, we'll have our members only question and answer class on Sunday. That's at 11 o'clock Seattle times. Seattle time. Um, members can ask their questions at any point during the week and I'll cover them in that class. So even if you can't attend live, if you're a channel member, you can ask uh, what you like and get your answers within the week. Um, I'll, I'll cover that weekly. So if you haven't yet joined as a member, you might want to consider that. There's that perk and a few other perks for channel members. Um, depending on what level you join at, we have some online courses. Um, I do have uh, on my website, speechmodification.com, a great number of videos, lessons and practice exercises, which are free. And I encourage you to check those out. I also have some paid online courses, but I keep those sub subscription prices very low. So you can check out some more details if you're interested in working on pronunciation and accent. And the um, word of the day series we've been doing here on YouTube is also now a free online course on my website that has uh, the pronunciation videos from our words of the day series, as well as um, definitions for the words. I will be launching very soon a new online course where I'm hoping that some of you YouTube viewers will check it out and um, join while it's a draft. So I'm making a, a course called The Sounds of American English, where I'm gonna be talking about every single sound in American English and helping you with accent patterns for those sounds, which words have it, how to practice them correctly. Um, and as I'm building the course, I'm gonna offer $2, a really low price, asking for your help and feedback uh, as it's a draft to tell me what else you'd like to see in the course to make it better for you. And then anyone who joins the course when it's still a draft will get 50% off the uh, full price at the end of the course. Um, so check that out. That should be airing very soon, probably within the next month on speechmodification.com. Thanks so much for a wonderful class today. And I really enjoy this time with you viewers. And I appreciate all of you for asking questions in class throughout the week, making suggestions for word of the day, and particularly, especially thank you to subscribers and channel members. I couldn't do it without you. I appreciate you very much. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound like a native speaker, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Bye, guys. See you next week and maybe tomorrow. <laughs>